The International Space Station is a marvel of modern engineering. Since the first crew took residence in November 2000, it has been orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes at a speed of 5 miles per second. There's something magical about predicting its appearance and watching it arc across the sky, as its solar array is illuminated by the sun. This video shows how I designed a device that can track the ISS location and continuously point to it. The starting point is the rotating platform. It has a set of gear teeth embedded on the inside edge so that it can be rotated by a motor. To make it run smoothly, it sits on a ball bearing race to reduce friction. On top, there's a stepper motor housing that will be able to move the pointer in an up and down direction, known as the elevation. This is secured with some captive nuts and M3 countersunk machine screws. The 28BYJ48 stepper motor is low cost and has a built-in gearbox providing good turning force. Again, this is held with captive nuts. A stepper motor driver is located on the other side. The holes are tapped, so no nuts are needed to hold the circuit board. Although the rotating platform does not move quickly, these components have been placed opposite each other so that the disc is reasonably well balanced. The next component shows the inner plate that acts as a shelf to locate some component parts. On the bottom is a double battery cell holder which is held in place with four countersunk screws. The lithium ion cells have been recovered from an old laptop battery pack and will provide 7.4 volts to power the motors and electronics. On the top is a Veribold circuit, strengthened with a machine screw to give it a strong fixing when plugging in and removing the micro USB lead. The brain of the device is an ESP32 microcontroller. It is a powerful computer and has plenty of inputs and outputs to control devices. It also has Wi-Fi built in so can connect to the internet to collect information, which will be useful for this device. There is another stepper motor driver board located in this section. This one drives the motor that rotates the pointer left to right, known as azimuth. Now is the time to look at the main base section. This unit will remain stationary and houses the power and electronics. It has a power jack at the back, so the lithium ion cells can be charged with a mains power supply. There is a main switch that controls the battery power. There's a small 0.91 inch OLED display. Although these are tiny, these displays are very bright and can provide a sharp graphic and text. This will be used to give instructions and location data to the user. The ESP32 has a built-in feature it can use touch switches. A single switch will be used in this design and consists of a simple washer and M5 dome headed screw. An input will occur when the switch is touched by a human as it can sense the small electrical signals in our bodies. These assemblies are now combined. It has been designed so that the inner plate sits on some supports within the body of the base section. A few drops of superglue will hold it. You can see that there's a USB slot so the unit can be programmed without having to dismantle it. There's also space inside the main body to house a small buzzer, with the sound coming out of the hole in the front face. Moving on to the next layer, the spindle plate. 
The spindle has been printed with a screw thread and has a small key to locate it in the main disc which stops it rotating. The rotating section above sits on a small spacer disc to provide some clearance. The azimuth stepper motor fits in this spindle plate and is held in place with simple machine screws and nuts. Once combined, the internal gear can be added to the stepper motor drive shaft. The holes in this base section are tapped and the spindle plate is held with four screws. The rotating platform can now be added, checking that the gears are meshed. A top collar is added as a spacer on the spindle and a locking nut is screwed on to secure the components together. This design makes use of a slip ring, which enables the ESP32 to send signals to the top motor without tangling up the wires, as it can continuously rotate. A six wire or channel slip ring is used, two wires for power and four wires to send binary data to the stepper motor driver board. The batteries do not need to be changed as they will be charged through the external jack so a bottom plate can be added and secured with screws. Some location screws are added to the rotating platform which enables the geodesic dome at the top to be fixed with a simple twist and lock motion. The dome encloses the device and provides some protection to the internal components. The final thing to add is the pointer. The two halves need to be assembled, a cone pointer pushed on the front and a locking collar. This can then slide onto the drive shaft of the elevation motor and all of the mechanical build is now complete. As you can see, the design allows the pointer to move continuously to point to any place in the universe. And this is what it looks like in real life. The software has been loaded and it's ready to try out. I've set up these compass positions on my workbench so I can check that it's pointed in the right direction. It needs to go through a calibration routine when it starts up so that it has some reference points to measure the angles it needs. The OLED display is quite small on camera so I've created an inset image to show you what messages are given. The first thing to set up is the elevation motor. The zero position should point towards the centre of the earth. Just touch the touch switch to fix the position and a message will come up to tell you it has been done. Next, the azimuth motor zero position needs to be set, which will be pointing to true north. To start with, the pointer needs to be set on the left hand side. The pointer will then raise up to point at the north star, Polaris. For my location, the latitude is 52.6 degrees, which happens to be the same angle the pointer needs to be raised to point to the north star. To check this is working, I've created a paper jig to make sure it's the correct angle. The ESP32 then looks for an internet connection and connects to it, which it does very quickly. Once on the internet, the device downloads the current location of the ISS and does some mathematical calculations to work out where to direct the pointer. This is updated every five seconds. If you watch, if you watch carefully, you can just about see the small movements being made. As the ISS orbits the Earth every 90 minutes, this pointer will move more slowly than the hour hand of a clock. When the device is tracking, the display shows the internet and local time. To check that I've got my mathematical calculations right, I wanted to compare where the tracker was pointing with a tracking service on the internet. 
I used isstracker.com. As I'm located in the Midlands, in England, the ISS was to the west of my location, and it was going to swing to the south as it did its flyby. I was hoping my device would follow this same path. This looks good. The pointer is towards the west, and as the time lapse progresses, you can see that it swings to the south. This is a great first test result. The next thing to do is work out when the next visible flyby will occur and hope for a clear night.